Good morning, good morning. It's so good to see you in church this morning. Sunday is the first day of the week. And on the first morning, on the first day, we're putting God first and worshiping Him. Come on, somebody. Isn't it so amazing? So good. Well, welcome to Freedom House Church. If it's your first time here, my name is Josiah. I'm the lead pastor of Freedom House. We've been pastoring now, coming on 16 years. Sweet 16. Come on now. We're one church in multiple locations, Fullerton, Irvine, online, uh, Espanol, and soon to come to Anaheim. Come on, clap, because we're live with our Irvine campus. What's up, Irvine? That's right. God is good, but so excited today to begin a new series um, that we're going to be talking on regarding spiritual growth, spiritual growth. And so as you remain standing, grab your note sheets. When you walked in, they handed you a piece of paper. It's the points to the message we'll be teaching today. The verses we'll be studying in God's Word. And we're going to jump right in. If you're online, they're going to put a link there where you can download uh, the message notes. There, essentially, it's my notes. I like to give you the Word. Amen. But before I do jump in the message, actually, one thing I want to mention something new uh, that we started as a church that a lot of people maybe you've been seeing and going what is that it's our freedom encounter weekend our freedom encounter weekend yeah shout out whoop whoop and so people get a little confused like is that our freedom conference freedom house conference no that's next month in may our freedom house conference that's when it's on pentecost week we won't have a holy spirit filled time don't miss that but our Freedom Encounter Weekend is something God put in my heart. And I just want to quickly, 60 seconds, tell you what that is. And what I've done is I've written a curriculum, also gathered um, many things that I've been through, through Bible college, different seminars. And I'm putting together a curriculum that essentially covers seven modules to help people live in the freedom Jesus called us to live in. It's a very intense discipleship two-day encounter weekend. And in those modules, it's all premised on where Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will what? Set you free. And if the truth can set you free, that means a lie can keep you bound. And so I'm going to talk, I'm going to teach seven modules, going to be over the course of two days to help you fully encounter the freedom God has for you. There's going to be some exercises. Every, every two people are going to have a spiritual coach or a mentor throughout the weekend, and we're going to help people experience the freedom. If you've been battling any type of addiction, depression, anxiety, we're believing that in this weekend, you are going to get delivered and free. Come on, somebody, in Jesus' name. So it's part of who we are. We're a discipleship church, but we also believe in the delivering um, freedom Christ has given us. And so register. There's a few spots left. There is a small um, registration uh, cost to help cover. We're going to uh, give you lunch and feed you and all that fun stuff. But if you're under hard times financially, don't worry about the cost. There's uh, scholarships available. We just want you to get there, okay? If, it's, if this one is packed, just go to the next one. I'm going to host them throughout the year. And I want people to experience total freedom in Christ. Come on, somebody. Say amen. And so really, really cool. All right, let's jump into the Word. Are you ready for the Word? We're starting, like I said, a new series on um, spiritual growth, and the series is entitled Growing in Faith, and it's all around growing spiritually and developing who God called us to be. It's going to be a series through the book of Colossians, and we're going to read today Colossians chapter 2 and verse 7, where Paul the Apostle is going to write to the believers in a town called Colossae, and he's going to encourage them in this summation of this verse, and we'll journey through it over the next couple of weeks. But here the Bible reads like this. It says... He says, you should be rooted and built up in him. In who? In Jesus. It says, built up, established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with what? Thanksgiving, right? Think, abounding with Thanksgiving. So here's the four things. He says that we are to be rooted, built up, established, and abounding. Say it with me. Say, rooted, built up, established, and abounding. These are the four premises that God is, is speaking to us in the book of Colossians on developing our faith. And I want to talk today a message that I've entitled Intentional Faith. Because growth doesn't happen automatically. It happens with intentionality. So I'm going to talk to you today about intentional faith. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word. It is not your word that needs prayer. It is our understanding. It is us, God, that need your power to speak to us so that, God, we can grow in who you've called us to be. God, I'm asking that today that you would develop our faith, that we would grow, Father, in spiritual formation. God, speak to us. Um, um, breathe on us, God, as we become more like Christ. God, I don't just want transformation. 
I want formation to be Christ-like. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. Give God one more hand clap. You might be seated. And just tell the person next to you, say, you need to grow in your faith. Tell them that. And then tell the second person, say, especially you. Just kidding. Don't say that. Come on. Come on. <laughs> don't pick on them. Be nice. Come on. Be nice. Amen. Especially you. Amen. We're going to start a new series here. And uh, over the next coming weeks, I'm going to teach from growing in our faith and how important it is that we develop spiritually and how that is so necessary for us in becoming the people God called us to be because we live in a generation that really focuses on gifts and talents and that's great that we develop our gifts and talents but how many know we need to develop our spiritual life okay and we need to develop our spiritual life not because it's simply important we need to develop because it's the most important your spiritual life is the most important part of your life because your spiritual life determines how all of your life will be. We are first spirit, then we are body, right? Um, doctors can keep a body alive, but when the spirit's gone, the body's dead. Your spirit is important. Say amen. And so I'm going to talk the next couple of weeks. I really feel in my heart is to help our church really develop the spiritual growth, the spiritual formation. A lot of people today are into self-improvement. I'm going to talk about spiritual improvement because I don't think you can improve yourself if your spirit is dead. I don't care how good it is on the outside. If the inside is hollow, you're going, you're going to feel like you're just not becoming who God has called you to become. And so I'm really excited about this series and, and, and really helping our church to bring this back into focus because I, I think that the measure, right, and the success of our Christianity does not determine on outward blessing but spiritual maturity, I got two amens and a few, a few looks, right? It, it determines on spiritual maturity, spiritual development. And, and, I, and I'm excited about this, and, and we're going to journey over this. And just so you all know how we do it at Freedom House, anytime I start a new series, I always do an introduction. And I, get, I love to preach, but I also love to teach. And, and we're going to break this down, and I might not even finish the whole outline today. I am not a fast food preacher. Okay. We like to slow cook this thing. We let it marinate. And we'll, and we'll eat week after week after week, okay? Tell your neighbor, I'm a season ticket holder. Say, I'm a season ticket holder. So I want you to commit to, to, to growing with this. Uh, I, when I was a younger preacher, you know, I used to just try to preach it all and fire hydrant, ah, you know? And, and then I was like, I'm going to pastor for the rest of my life. Slow down. We're okay. We're all right, okay? We'll journey together. So I'm really going to journey through the book of Colossians, and we're going to look at how Paul is teaching the New Testament believers about growing spiritually, because if there's anything we need today, listen to me. We live in a world that there are all kinds of things that are going to try to rock your faith. We live in a world that is throwing all kinds of things to try to, try to divert you or to in, infringe on your faith. In fact, I love the picture that Paul used in Galatians when he says, who has cut into your faith? Like, ha has almost cut you off like someone did on the way to church today? Like, if that was me, I'm sorry. Just kidding. You know, if someone cut you off, he's like, who has cut you off? Like, who jumped on your, in, in, and messed up your, your faith walk? Like, this is something we need. We cannot in this season have wavering faith. We need established faith. We need faith that is building up. We need men of faith. Come on. We need women that are of faith. We need teenagers that are of faith. Amen. A strong faith built up, rooted, established, and abounding. And this is something that I believe will develop us to become the believers. Because like I said, a lot going on in the world today. As many of you know, as of today, April 14th, 2024, there was an attack um, on, upon Israel and we're praying for Israel, and I wanted to make it a part of the message so it stays on YouTube and the prayer continues. But we're praying. Psalm 122 says, pray for the peace in Jerusalem. So we're praying. People say, what about the rest of the world? I'm praying for them too, but right now bombs are dropping, and we're praying that God would protect his, his people, and like the God of the Bible, that all their enemies would, be, would fall to the side and protection and peace in Jerusalem. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, y'all better say amen with me. Come on now, amen. It's biblical and it's powerful. So this type of day and age, you need faith because the enemy wants to throw you off. And if not the enemy, your spouse. Just shake it. Come, come, come. 
you throw me out. <laughs> Just kidding, all right? But here are Paul in Colossians. Let me get straight to the context here because, like I said, I love to teach. Um, Paul is writing these verses. We read Colossians 2, 7 about being built up, rooted, established, and abounding. He's writing to the church that in a city called Colossae. Say it with me, Colossae. And this city was a city that was really overrun by the philosophical beliefs that even today's philosophy is founded upon. Aristotle, Plato, all of these philosophers that, that quote unquote had the wisdom of the future and the wisdom of life, they were indoctrinating believers to essentially believe in the philosophical views and not and stray away from the doctrinal views of what God has been establishing in their faith. And I, I find it interesting that in the midst of some of the greatest philosophers, the gospel was being established. Because how many know all wisdom is in Jesus? Come on, somebody. Amen. So Jesus, the gospel's being preached. Well, even today's philosophers that you read are, 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 are being established, are, are even today being studied. And I'm not a hater on philosophy, but if philosophy is throwing away your faith, throw away the philosophy book and read the Bible. I'm just going to play that right there, okay? Yes, I'm one of those preachers. And so, you know, read, read God's word. And so Paul is trying to encourage the believers in Colossae who had become new to the faith had recently gotten baptized, and recently had received Christ. And he was telling them, you need to grow in this thing. Like, you just can't live on an encounter you had a year or two ago. You can't just think that you're going to, like, make it endure to the end if you still kind of got, th got that, that beginner's faith. And he was encouraging them that they had to build their faith, that they had to know who they were, and you can't just live off yesterday's faith. It's something that develops, right? Now, when I'm talking about rooted and built in faith, I'm not talking about your salvation. I'm talking about your transformation. I'm talking about your formation, becoming like Christ, and, and being who we are called to be. And so here are three doctrinal beliefs that Paul is establishing that I want us to embrace in our personal lives as Paul writes this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Number one, the three doctrinal beliefs in, Col in Colossae, write this down. He was establishing to the believers that the church is the body of Christ. Say this, say, we are the body of Christ. He was explaining to them that, that your faith needs to grow because you're not just an island, you're a part of the body. And he's going to say this here in Colossians 1. Let's read this together. The Bible reads like this. He says, now I rejoice, watch what Paul's going to say, in what I am suffering for you. And I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's affliction. So he's like, I'm going through stuff to build you up. He says, for the sake, let's all read this together, for the sake of what? His body, which is what? His body, that is what? The church. And he was telling the believers and he's telling us that we're not just a part of a group on Sunday. He was saying, you are a part of the very body of Christ on earth. Like, like you are a part of Christ's body. And, and a lot of times you'll say, well, Jesus is no longer on earth. Actually, no, his body is still on earth. It's us. That we're the hands and feet of Jesus. He's the head and we're the body. He, he's, the, he's the one that's the head of the church. If you're going to say, I want to talk to the head of the church. He's available 24-7. You can pray anytime you want, okay? He's the head. I'm, a part, I'm just a part of the body. We are all a part. And this is so important in regards to growing faith. Because there is a, 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 a and I'm going to call it a false philosophical belief that People are like, I, I just, I love God, but I don't love church. <laughs> and it sounds real holy. I love God. I serve God. All I need is me and my cat. Well, that means you got issues right there because cats are demonic. Just kidding. I'm just joking. I'm joking. That was a joke. Someone, someone just jumped off the YouTube right there. I lost him. Anyway, it was a joke. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow, so... I just said, me and my cat, me and my dog, Fido. And it sounds real like, like, because I like the church. That is so, you'll never grow your faith. Because you're supposed to be a part of the body. Because he's the head and this is his body. It would be like if you came up to me like, hey, I like your head, but I hate your body. I'd be like, what the heck? That's like a backwards compliment. You know, like a backslap, you know, like. 
I like you, but I don't like your body. That's what we're telling God when we say we don't like your church. You're saying, I love you, but I don't like your body. He's like, well, too bad. We're connected. And the body's not perfect. Y'all listen. It is not perfect. Everybody in here, we got issues. Tell your neighbor, especially you. Just kidding. Look forward. Look forward. Look forward. Look forward. Okay. If you're married, that was your chance. That you, had a, you had a split second to tell her you got it. I'm just joking. You got issues. Or him, all right? Like we, we, there's issues up in the church, 100%. The, God never said his body wouldn't be perfect. The body, ha, uh, it, it goes through things, but nonetheless, we're still the body. God says the church is my body. We're not just a part of a, of, a, of, a, of a building. We are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ upon earth. Come on, somebody. And we're living and thriving. So that's why we have to grow spiritually because we're a part of Jesus. This is his body, and, and, and we are a part of it. And I don't ever want you to feel, because here's a lie that Satan will tell you. And by the way, the devil's a liar. Okay? The first thing that we're introduced to Satan in the garden, you know what the first thing he did? Was lie. Never forget that the way Satan will always show up in your life is through a lie. Okay? Okay, he's a liar. He lied like the rug. Okay? Some of you will get that later. He lies. And so here's the lie Satan will tell you. He'll try to tell you you are not an important part of the body. The body doesn't need you. That you go to church and you're not important and and you're just, you're like an insignificant part and who cares? Nobody will notice if you're there. He'll he'll isolate you, reject. And and he'll make you feel like you're not important. You're just, you're you're a small part. Can I tell you that every part is important in the body? I nubbed my pinky toe one time on a coffee table. Do you know how important my pinky toe is? Every step I was like, ah, ah, oh, man. I, I, I thought I like broke my pinky toe. I couldn't, you know, I, I was like, I, I couldn't play basketball. I couldn't go. I couldn't do nothing. I'm like, a little pinky toe done messed up my whole brain. You might feel like a pinky toe in the church. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, you are an important pinky toe. The church needs you. The body needs you. You are, the church would not be the same without you. Tell your neighbor, you're an important pinky toe to the body. Just kidding. Okay, don't say that. Sorry for the, sorry for the picture. Some people have ugly toes. Just joking. I'm just joking. Okay, I'm on fire right now. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm offending everybody right now. It's every part is important. Every part is important. Why? Because he wants us to grow. Because we're a part of the body. Number two, second doctrinal belief in the book Colossians, he's telling the church, is he's telling them this, that the indwelling of Christ in each individual believer, that the believer has Christ in us. Again, I'm teaching here. I get, don't, don't think I'm not preaching because I'm not sweating. You're like, he's not sweating, he's not working. I'm working, okay? The indwelling of Christ in each believer. He's like, you have to grow in your faith because Christ is in you. Now, it almost makes no sense. Let's read this together, Colossians 1. Watch this here. He says this to to the church. He says, to them, God has chosen. Someone say, God chose. So we didn't choose, he chose. He says, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles. Stop right there. He's like, God wants to show all the people who don't believe in him, God wants to show them something. And here's what God wants to show them. The glorious riches of this mystery which is in Christ, where is he? Which is Christ, where? Where? Tell your neighbor, in me. He says, the hope of glory. God, there's so much meat in this one verse. Like, we're, this is like grade A Wagyu steak right here, man. God says, I have chosen to put a mystery in you. Let me give you another, another, another uh, synonym. I've chosen to put something in you that don't even make sense. It make no sense. That you're going to be like, what? Arr. Scooby snack. Arr. What? It don't even make sense what I put in you. He says, I have put Christ. Watch this now. You think he's in heaven. Yes, he's there. But can I tell you where else he is? He's in you. When you've received Christ, important footnote, as your personal Lord and Savior. 
when you receive him as Lord, he resides in you. It makes no sense. Let me tell you why it makes no sense. Because some of us, we walk around, we're like, Christ, you're in me? Because there's some days I feel like there's something else in me. <laughs> Starts with D and ends with Emen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're like, Christ is in her, Lord? Because I, I promise you, I thought I saw her head spin when she was yelling at me. <laughs> I'm about to say, Pastor, you need to do an exorcism at my house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All the men are looking straight. I have no idea what he's talking about. I just have no idea. So, so. Because there are days I don't feel like Christ. There are days where I feel like the devil lies that maybe there's some demonic stuff in me. Maybe, maybe there's some strongholds in me that have not yet come out of my life. And really what's in me is not Christ. What's in me is, is this fallen nature that I keep, I keep feeding and I keep, I, I keep going towards. And I feel like Paul, when he says the things I want to do, I don't do. And the things I don't want to do, those I do. What a wretched sinner I am. Oh, but thank God, he writes, for the victory in Christ Jesus. Because I said... Why well, have to grow? Why? Because you have Christ in you. Now I know that makes no sense. You're like, Pastor, that makes no sense. Because there are days I don't feel like Christ is in me. But he's in you. And it's a mystery. And why do we have to grow spiritually? Because if you've confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Christ is not just in heaven, he's in you. And the times that you almost feel schizophrenic, because the party is like, slap her, slap him. <laughs> and then someone says, you better not do that. You're like, you're right. Am I crazy? Like, there's two voices sometimes. <laughs> just, 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 just cuss them out. Just tell you. Like, no, don't do that. Like, I should just walk out of the service right now. No, you should sit. And you feel like schizophrenic. Like, well, what's going on in my head? And that voice wasn't on before when you were sinning. I want to tell you, you're not crazy. You got Christ in you. And he's trying to grow your faith. Come on, somebody. He's trying to grow our faith. Why should we grow spiritually? Because we have Christ in us. And he's speaking to you. God speaks. He's speaking. He speaks to us. Why? To make us more like him. Okay, let me give you an analogy. I know what time it is. Like I said, we're a season ticket holder, okay? The best way I can explain this is the way I learned it in Bible college. And, and, and I got this glove right here. This is my golf glove. It's, uh, I, I wear it when I shoot 65. And uh, some of you that don't know golf, that was, that's, I can't lie on the pulpit. That's a lie. Okay, anyway. You know, someone once challenged me to a golf match. I won because I scored more points. It was pretty, pretty cool. You're like, wow, he's really good. Actually, if you have more, you lose. But anyhow, so it's a golf club. And the best way I can explain it is this way. This golf glove is like our life because this glove, it's a shell. But this glove cannot live with anything in it. It's a great glove, but the truth is without anything in it, it's dead. It falls to the ground. It, it's just, it, it falls. You can try to fill that glove and say, wow, glove, you have great potential. And that's why the world tries to tell you there's great potential in you. And the world gets so close, but they're still so far because they'll say there's greatness in you. But you missed the last sentence through Christ. Because no matter how hard I try on my own effort to obtain greatness apart from Jesus, it will always end up empty, full of myself when I need to be full of Christ. Come on, somebody. Yeah, there's greatness in you. Yeah, there's potential in you. But you'll never reach that potential until you get the right thing in you. And yes, oh, there's potential in you. You could shoot a 60. But it depends whose hand is in you. <laughs> and we're all guilty. I'll raise my hand of trying to fill our life with the wrong things. To have the right outcome. To fill it and realize why is my golf game still not good? <laughs> Read between the lines. I'm not preaching golf, okay? Why is my, why is my life still not? Because what's in you? How many know that if my hand in here can only do so good? But if Tiger Woods' hand was in this golf glove, 
How many know he'd do a lot better? Okay. Can I ask you a question? What's in you? What's in you? And when the Bible says Christ is in you, we're saying, don't get lost on the shell. The hand of God is in my life. And he wants to move and guide me where I'm called to be. Come on, give God a hand clap if you believe that this morning. Tell your neighbor, what's in you? Say, what's in you? Hallelujah. Number three, I got to move quick here. Doctrinal belief, Paul has established, he's, he's trying to tell them that Christ is in you. That's why you got to grow spiritually. And number three, he's like, you got to grow spiritually because in Jesus, if, if Jesus is in you, then in Jesus is all wisdom and knowledge. Like, all wisdom and knowledge is, so how can I remain stagnant if all wisdom and knowledge that is in Christ I have access to? Let's read the verse here in Colossians. He says it like this. Uh, next verse he says, Colossians 2.2 2 says, my goal, and I love how Paul says his goal because it just it tells us really quick what God's goal is. He says, my goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete what? In order that they may know the what? The mystery of God, namely Christ. No, I believe I have one more verse there, but he tells us that we need to have it. In whom, watch this now, are hidden all the what? All the treasures of the wisdom and what? knowledge all the treasures of the wisdom and knowledge are in who in Christ so watch this watch watch this connection but if Christ is in me then I have access to all that wisdom and knowledge I need for my life that's why I cannot remain stagnant that's why plateauing spiritually is unacceptable to God and Paul is trying to tell them this is why you're being thrown off everywhere because you're living on yesterday's faith you're still you're still not knowing what you're called to be a part of and let's summarize it you're a part of the body of Christ you gotta grow he's like you're up you he's like you have Christ inside of you you gotta grow and number three you have access to all wisdom and knowledge in Jesus you gotta grow you gotta we have we can't just stay on the elementary truths it's in our lives and so the thought process is, well, if I'm not spiritually growing, what's the opposite of spiritual growth? Spiritual death. And not everything that's dead looks dead. <laughs> one day, the um, best way I can explain it is one time I was, I, I, I'm into gardening now. Like, I'm really, in, I want my, like, my plants good. I turned 42, y'all. I'm a little older now, okay, like. Just, you know, my plants and hallelujah. That's right. You know, so like now I'm into like, you know, let's, let's just walk, honey. I'm like, you know what I mean? Like what's happened to me? I'm getting older. Okay, come on. Amen. No, no, I'm just getting more wiser. All the guys. Amen. All right. So I'm like, you know, I like my gardening good. And, and so my gardener comes and he says, hey, Mr. Silva, he says, your palm tree is dead. And I said, it looks great. What do you mean it's dead? He says, it's dead. I said, how so? He says, because it's not growing any new leaves. I was like, you better preach. <laughs> I about did it. I said every head bowed back cold for myself. You know what I mean? Like, I said, say that again. He says, because it's not growing any new leaves, the palm tree's dead. Oh, I was like, Lord, may I never look like I'm growing. But the truth is I'm dead spiritually because I'm not reaching new levels of faith in my life. I don't want to be no dead palm tree. I want to grow in the things of God. Somebody say, I want to grow in the things of God. Why? Because you might think, I look spiritually alive, but you might be spiritually dead because you're no longer growing. Now, I'm not making a doctrine out of palm trees, but I'm trying to tell you, could it be? It's just a question. That we think we're spiritually alive, but we're spiritually dead because we stopped growing 10 years ago. Oh, my God. My God. 10 years, 15. We're, we're still, you know, we're still at that level. And we wonder, why am I, why, why, why am I thrown off? It's because you need to grow in this spiritual walk.
Your spiritual life is not just important, it's the most important. It is, it is what will, will grow your life, and you do that. And so here's the first point. Write this down. I'm wrapping it up right here, but write this down. How, are we, how, do, we begin, how do we be rooted and built up in him? Well, number one is spirit, knowing that spiritual growth isn't accidentally. It takes intentionality. It's intentional. You do not inherit faith. What do I mean by that? You cannot get to heaven and try to get in based upon someone else's faith. You, don't, you can't inherit your grandmother's faith. You can't inherit your mom's faith. You can't inherit your dad, grandfather's faith. You can't inherit your father's faith. You cannot inherit anybody else's faith. You can't, like, you can't sneak into heaven on someone else's gym pass. <laughs> Even though some of y'all do that. Beep. Okay. Beep. I'm in. Cool. You can't do that in heaven. You're going to be like, my mom's faith. Beep. You're like, nope. They checked the picture. Okay. <laughs> you got to have your own faith. You got to have your own faith. Did you hear what I said? You got to have your own faith. We got, I got to develop my own faith, and it's not going to happen accidentally. It's going to take intentionality of me making a conscious decision that I want to grow in my faith. And this is the crux of the, of the, of the series I want to, I want to communicate and to, and to help our church is to grow spiritually. Because in our world today, there's a lot of self-improvement. And I think that's great. Improve yourself. But you need spiritual improvement. You need spiritual development. Because you can try to develop everything else but miss the most important part, which is your spiritual self. Your spiritual self. Because if you're not improving on the inside, it don't matter what's on the outside. Can I say that again? It don't matter what's on the outside. It don't matter. You, you can try all the outside and, and, and you can draw all that and go ahead with your bad self. Go ahead, boo. You do you, boo. But if you ain't growing spiritually, you will be a hollow, dead palm tree. And we're dying on the inside. And this takes where Paul writes. That's why he says, he says, be rooted. Back to verse 7, Colossians 2, 7. He says, be rooted and built up in him. Strengthen in the faith. Some will say strengthen in the faith. That means building your faith. He says, as you were taught, overflowing, abounding in thankfulness. He's like, this reaches levels you don't even know. And it takes intentionality. It takes every day. It takes you developing this. Someone say intentionality. When I got saved and I gave my life to Christ, you know, now coming upon 24, no, what am I talking about? 26 years ago, I gave my life to Jesus. Yo, hallelujah, amen. 26 years ago, I gave my life to Christ. And... I'm going to say a statement, and I say it with sincerity and, and, and affection, um, and I'm not knocking our church. I love our church, and I'm not knocking any other church, but when I got saved, I realized that Sunday wasn't enough. Okay. I do my best to feed you God's word, but I'm telling you, I came to the realization that Sunday is not enough. That if I am going to grow, Josiah, taking responsibility for my faith, then I just can't rely on Sunday morning. That I need to have a daily spiritual growth plan. And we, it's funny how we understand that in any other area. But then it comes to our spiritual life, we somehow think that's enough. Like, like, let's just apply that to physical health. Like, imagine if you said, I'm going to go to the gym every Sunday for an hour. And you're going to look, look like a gym person. Whatever that means. I want to wear the Lulus, the Outlaws. I wear the Amazons. I don't care. I go there. Amazon on sale. And it's like... Just whatever. People are like, all cute. God bless you, cute. Get off the, I want to do bench. You're working, you're getting a strong jawbone. I need to wedge my pecs. Come on, I mean, anyway, sorry. So, I just had a little vent in church. That was my venting. Look, get out of the way. Okay. So, imagine if you went to the gym an hour. You mean, you sweat. You mean, you were like, I mean, you were like sweating for an hour. But then the rest of the week, you ate like, like a dog. You know what I mean? You were just like. Krispy Kremes and double decker chili fries and animal style. I mean, you were just like, and you're like, I don't know why I'm not reaching my goals. 
this working out stuff don't work. It's like, like, like I'm saying, like, does that make sense? Like, can you imagine, like, let me, let, me, let me just put it in very professional, practical sense. If you're like, I'm going to start my own company, but you only, like, worked hard on your company for an hour every week. But then the rest of the week, you didn't do anything to expand your company. You're like, I don't know why my business isn't, 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 isn't successful. Because you, you can't live off of one hour. Now let's apply spiritual life. I cry mocos and everything. Lord! I even take the notes and I write past Josiah's points in the worship song. Oh my God, it creates me chills. Goosebumps, goosies, you know. Like, oh my God. And I, and I don't know why I'm not growing spiritually. You can't live off Sunday morning. You got to have your own spiritual growth plan on the daily. I said on the daily. I said on the daily. This is why I just feel burdened to help our church in this season. Kingdom expansion. It's not just, and again, I'm not knocking. So glad you're in church on Sunday. Please do not misinterpret what I'm saying with all sincerity and affection. But what does it matter what's on the outside if the spirit ain't growing? If we're sp not spiritually alive? Like who cares we get a Walmart if we're spiritually dead? What's that mean? Who cares about lights and L if, if we're spiritually dead? That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't care. It don't, who cares? That, what does it matter what we get if we're spiritually not growing and we're not developing? Then all we're doing is we're putting on more exterior wellness when the interior is not developing and it's not growing. I'm going to tell you, but when you're growing spiritually, lives will be changed. Strongholds will be broken. Uh, depression will have to flee. Your faith will be be built, rooted, strengthened, established, abounding, because there's something alive inside, and it's greater. Spiritual growth. I'm just on this trip right now. I want to see our church spiritually alive. Spiritually alive. Because when that comes alive, everything changes. Every, listen, everything, everything everything. You've met them and I've met them. Well, people that are alive physically but their soul is dead. Their soul. We're going to come spiritually alive. Next coming weeks, I can't wait to talk to you more of how we're going to become spiritually alive. I got so much more to share. But let's pray. Just bow your heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you right now. Spiritual development. Spiritual improvement, if you want to use those words. A lot of people into self-improvement. It's great. What about spiritual improvement? What about spiritual growth, spiritual formation? Well, what is that exactly? Becoming more like Jesus. We'll talk about it in weeks to come. The fruit of the Spirit. Father, thank you. Because this is what is matter. We are spirit first, then body. And we're going to take this serious. Let's all stand to our feet. Would you repeat this prayer after me? Just bow your heads and let's, let's pray this together. All together, all campuses, say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, say, I now realize through your word how important my spiritual formation is, my spiritual growth, the development of my spirit man or spirit woman. Say, God, I'm sorry. Say, I repent. For the days I didn't take my spiritual development as serious as I needed to. Because in this season, my faith needs to stand. So I won't be thrown off. misled or deceived but I want to be rooted built up established and abounding 
growing in faith to be more like Christ. Because I'm part of the body of Christ. I have Christ in me. And in you, Jesus, is all wisdom and understanding. Thank you, Lord, for choosing that. In Jesus' name.